why can't it be us? Those were the words Shamar Dalton told me about becoming CAA champions this season. This is Dalton's last season as an Aggie, so he plans to knock this one out of the park. Reporting for NABJ News, I'm Corey McIntyre. Earlier, Ross spoke about weather in the storm during the colder months at Wrigley. So as you can see, it's warm, it's August, and that storm may be over. Tomorrow, the Bears will take on the Tennessee Titans in their first preseason game. Finally, a chance to hit someone in a different uniform. With Kirk Cousins going down for the Vikings, Green Bay still doesn't have stability without Aaron Rodgers, and we all know the Bears. We talk about them every week. So, yeah, I think the Lions do have the NFC North on lock. After this highly anticipated matchup, ISU will look to continue to make strides towards perfection as they kick off their season opener next Monday in Seth Q Arena. For TV10 News, I'm Corey McIntyre. We certainly will miss having it when it's not here. It's, it's not the same without it. Craver's Stamy with Stamy's Barbecue, a staple in Greensboro for almost a century, says they've noticed the lack of foot traffic in the city because the ACC tournament isn't here. We spoke via Zoom from different cities. You've got tens of thousands of fans coming to the area and just being directly across the street. Uh, it, it turn, it'll turn a, a normal week into an extremely busy week. Greensboro Sports Foundation also recognizes the impact that this tournament has on the city. When the men's tournament is here, it's a huge impact to our community. Uh, you know, it's about $13.5 million worth of economic impact uh, compared to the women's tournament, which is about $8 million. President of Greensboro Sports Foundation, Richard Beard, says the move not only causes the city to lose out on millions of dollars, but it also takes away national exposure to the city, something that you can't place a dollar value on. Craver Stamey says their business will take a hit with the absence of the tournament, but they're hopeful for the future. It's a bummer not to have it, but you know we're we're certainly happy that we still have our local customer base in Greensboro. Corey McIntyre in ABJ News. Coming off of a morale-boosting win against Lindenwood, the Redbirds prepare to face one of their toughest matchups yet, the Indiana State Sycamores. They are 28 and 8, looking to improve that record at Duffy Bass Field. The Sycamores pitcher Jared Spence brought some scouts out, but that didn't stop the Redbirds from swinging. Daniel Pacella was the first bird with a hit in his game. And it shortly led to the birds getting the one to nothing lead in the first. They answered back with three bombs. This would make the lead three to one in favor of the Sycamores. After swapping pitchers in and out, the Redbirds found a man to finish the job. Joe Husick came in and dominated for the last two innings. Here's what Coach Holm was thinking when he made the substitution. Probably has our best change up on the, on the mound. Um, so, you know, we flung him three of them and obviously squared up that last one a little bit, but he didn't get it far enough and, you know, worked out well for us. Now, after the Birds made a small comeback through the sixth and eighth innings, it was time for Daniel Pacella to step up to the plate. It's safe to say he delivered. Pacella walks it off for the Redbirds and they go on to win 4-3. to three. After speaking with Pacella, it seemed like he was locked in from the time he stepped up to the plate. I think it was 1-2 count and, uh, and game on the line. I just wanted to put the ball in play because I was like, I'm just not punching out in this situation. But the kid threw me a hanging breaking ball and I just, I just hit it. That's all I could say to it. But no, an unbelievable experience. The Aggies are arguably the hottest team in the CAA with a record of 11 and 5. They dropped a tough game against Davidson, moving them from second to third in their conference. So to avoid a loss in momentum, they need to get back on track against George Mason. I asked Coach Ben Hall, "What is their secret to winning?" His response is simple: You keep it one game at a time. You know we've been doing that all season so far, making it like a one and zero feeling every day. And for right now, our jobs come out and practice at a high level today, get prepared for what we need to do this weekend. This is his 10th year coaching for the Aggies. He believes he knows what it takes to win. We need to be multifaceted, and we need to be able to score in different ways, and we got to play defense, and, um, and we have to pitch. I think when you're doing all three well, you're giving yourself a chance to win every day. 
Shamar Dalton is off to a blazing start this season. He is among the top of the team in terms of batting average and hits so far. Even though the odds are on their side, Dalton doesn't want to take a day off. Don't take anybody for granted because anybody can beat us any given time. So just go in there with the right mindset, execute the plan, 